Hi, and welcome to another DIY Titpit, a project idea that will hopefully inspire you and give you some thoughts about using stuff that you've got lying around, even bits of scrap wood that might be destined for the fire, and actually putting them to some kind of use. Now, I do focus a lot on wood in this uh, series, partly because I think you can make the most dramatic differences to wood when you sand it, oil it, stain it, or whatever you're going to do. So it's also a lot easier to work with, I find. Uh, so for those reasons, I think there's lots of good, uh, good reasons why we should be uh, using wood. Don't forget to like this video. Uh, don't forget to set the little alarm bell and uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And then I'll carry on making more of these kind of things for you. I mean, I think about ideas, I just think, well, okay, well, what can we make today? Now, I really enjoyed making the coffee table. And I think furniture is something which you can actually put almost like a, a price on. I mean, what you're making is priceless because it'll be unique. You can just say, well, okay, we just have to buy a coffee table, it'll be 100 quid. And I'm going to say I must have 100 quid and I'll create something which is gorgeous. So I'm going to do another furniture thing today. And what I thought I'd try and create is is a bookshelf. Bookshelves are, I think, great things to have. So I found in my shed these old bits of wood, okay? I don't know where they came from or what they're off, but they're obviously a big offcut of some beautiful piece of elm, maybe. And I've also got this, which is an old, again, bit of this wany edged something. But what I can see Underneath here is this most amazing grain that I'm hopeful we will be able to sand off and reveal. I think that's going to be absolutely beautiful. The only slight issue I've got is, is the back. Now, I couldn't find anything because I reckon we need a back. I can only find this bit of wood here. And I don't know if you can see, but that is way wobbly. And that is just all over the place. So what we're going to do here is try and use, even though it's not ideal, this bit of wood, and show you some techniques uh, for getting this back into shape. Basically, I'm going to try and keep this simple because even the simplest project seems to take forever. But if I was to put that on there like that and put that on there like that, and I was to then have that fall down, put the shelves going across in between the middle, I think it would have the makings of a really nice bookshelf. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm, I'm not even going to bother with the bottom shelves. Let's just do what we need to do to create this little honey of a thing. So what's the process? Well, I don't really know. Those things, apart from being sanded, are pretty much ready to go. And just take a look at this. Just amazing bit of oh, detail in that. Oh, love it. So let's start off by cutting this to size. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the piece of wood I've got here and notice if there's anything on here that I don't particularly like. I don't particularly like that. Um, and also it seems to be more warped towards the end. There's a few holes. I'm not particularly bothered about those. So I'm going to chop from that end. It's roughly the right sort of shape. So it's good enough for me. So let's do it empirically. We're here. We don't need to do any measuring. Going to get rid of those holes at the bottom there. Don't like those. Or actually, it doesn't matter because it's going to be like that anyway. So that's fine. You get the kind of idea. And actually, in terms of bringing that thing back into a shape, I reckon a flat shape, these things will pull it together anyway. And then we need to measure this distance here and see what it is. 50, there, 50 centimetres. Now, hopefully, because it'd be really nice to have one thing at the top, two, three, four shelves on that, I think. So we need this to be at least two metres. Well, my guess is it is two metres. It looks like it's over two metres. OK, that is, hallelujah, two metres, 25. Yippee! Let's cut this into four 50 centimetre adubris. It's a technical term. OK. There we go. 50 centimetres. It's worth cutting your first one and then measuring from where that cut is because whatever you cut with has a width, as in the blade width. It's only a couple of millimetres, but it can make a difference. That's interesting because here's a little bit short. Now, I measured that. What do I always say? Measure twice, cut once. That is 50 centimetres. And that is 51. Right, mm -hmm. that sucks. That down there is 50. So obviously, my piece of plywood 
is not level because it fits there. Right then, okay. So we're gonna have a slightly winky wonky thing here. Glad that happened because I would have hated to have uh, messed, messed that up so dramatically in the early stages. So now we're gonna, having learnt from our mistakes, and actually, thinking about this, the one at the top needs to be longer. That is 60 centimetres. Yeah, I think that will be a nice top, 60 centimetres. Using the set square to give us a nice 90 degree angle. And that goes on the top like that. And you can see a plan is forming. Now one thing I do notice is I was hoping to use this without too much fiddling around. But the top of this is not level. I think these two unfortunately need to be the same, the same length. Let's just measure the shortest distance there and it's 101 Dalmatians, 101. Okay, so they need to just be tidied up. We'll do that in a minute, let's carry on chopping. So we've got the top, we've got a shelf there. We need two more shelves, so we'll have one that goes about there. The, and the thing is, when you're working with natural wood like this, it, you are going to have to make it up as you go along, sort of. There's nothing you can do about that. We're not working with stuff that's absolutely perfectly sized. Well, it's perfect for it. 50 and a half. So we're going to go with 50 and a half for that. But that is, to me, the joy of working in wood like this. Because you can be as um, adapting as you like. Now, I have to say, that looks a little bit weird. That's long enough for there, so I'm wondering if we might substitute around a bit, because this is just a design thing, but I didn't particularly like. Thinner one might look better. Be oh, you know what, who cares? No, it's a design feature now. You see how this is looking already? It's really nice. And then one in the middle, which is 50 and a half. Any particular bits of those we like the best? No, they're all the same. And a half. Again, looking at the wood, deciding which bit of it is best placed to use. And lo and behold, this is a very odd expression to think about. It. Gosh, I love this already. Voila! We have the makings of what's going to be spectacular. I really do love this. The process is now to actually measure the size that we need to cut this off empirically. Oh no, first of all, let's cut these things just off at 90 degrees because they're a bit wobbly at the top and make sure that they're both identical size. And measure exactly what that was because we definitely don't want it to be wrong. Exactly 101. So let's make this exactly 101 as well. Okay, so that's now all squared up. So we have our shelf. So that is it in a nutshell, apart from cut the piece of plywood to the right size. So let's line this up. And there's no shame whatsoever. In fact, it makes perfect, perfect sense in actually doing it on location. This is not going to be super refined. I don't care. I love the fact that it's rustic. Now I'm going to mark these. So that's, this is number three. One from the top, two is the second one down. Three left as you're looking at it. Three left, one, and that's four. And this makes life easier when we come to put it all together. So this is called a cutting list. Well, it's not a list, is it? Cutting scenario. So I'm just going to chop this to size. Job done. So now we have a fairly wobbly back. Now I think at this point I can't bother to, to actually do the back, as in sand the back. I don't think there's any need. So let's just see how we're going to try and straighten this. But does it matter? They're not exactly perfectly whatever shelves, are they? I don't think it matters. It's all part of it. As long as it sort of sits in there and looks all right. I don't care. It's fine. So now, this is the boring bit, which is great for you because you just have to watch as I speed this up. But I've not got to do this. But this, if you like, is key to the whole thing. And the secret of wood and the use of wood is actually cleaning it up, sanding it. Ah. 
outside if you can. Time for assembly. You can see it's taken so long that even the sun's changed position. Wow. Now we're just going to work out which sides we think work best. Well that's definitely one. I like the way that fits. Works for me. Uh, drill a pilot hole. So we've got at least a fixed point now. Another one in here. Okay, that's worked. I'm going to sell the other side. Ugh, I need to think they fit. Okay, just do another bit of measuring to make sure that they are correct. And again, with this kind of stuff, you know, you're also doing it by eye. Now the great thing about choosing to have a plywood bag is that uh, you have got something very strong to um, get into. So again, making constant adjustments as I go along. Ooh. So I'm a bit of a fan of screws. And most of the time I don't care about seeing them, but in this instance I didn't want to see them. So that makes life slightly more complicated, but worth it. So in theory, let's just do that. You won't be able to see how it's held together. How amazing is that? Well, it was never going to be a particularly quick project, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty proud of how that looks. Now that needs to be oiled with my favourite thing, Danish oil. But I think what I love is that out of some scraps of wood that I probably would have just thrown away, I've created something which I'm really proud of. And you know, that's part of it, isn't it? You know, you do these kind of things, you do these projects, and it's not just about creating something that's beautiful, it's creating something which you made that you can actually look back on at the end of the day and say, I did that. And it's a gift for somebody, or it's something that's gonna go in your office, and it's beautiful. And that's one of the reasons why I really encourage you to do your DIY, this kind of project. It's not repairing a roof, it's fun, it's creative and it's lovely. So make sure you like this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and I'll be back with more projects like this very soon.